South Africa, welcome to Afternoon Express. We hope you had a great weekend. How are you, Jeannie? Good, very well, thank you. <laughs> so today on the show, we feature a very brave and courageous young woman. Her name is Udumeleng Seku. She survived severe burns at 11 months old. We also take a look at an organization called Children of Fire, which takes care of young burn survivors. If you've ever suffered a trauma and overcome a trauma, we'd love to hear from you. So chat with us on our social media networks. All you need to do is tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtag uh, uh, Afternoon Express. Then comment on our Facebook page, Afternoon Express, or give us a call. We are live today, 083-913-3728. Yeah. Then in our winner home design segments, our design contestants are going to be meeting up with all of their mentors to uh, chat with them to see what's happening in their lounge dining room areas. Then in the kitchen, Kitchen, we have the dearest Mr. Clem Pedro. You look like you've already gotten quite sorted in Can here. you see? I'm even a little messy. I know, and I know. it looks like we're going Italian. So last week we made pasta. Yes, this week so we're good. It a step further, yeah. making our tortellini. Our own tortellini. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't get started immediately. Especially seeing as I'm like already <laughs> yeah, covered in flour. Exactly. Yeah, well, I said last week that you're going to be in like my little Italian okay. in the kitchen cupboard. Sure. So remember, you can cook with us as well. All you need to do is visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and uh, there you'll find recipes and, of course, the shopping list so that you can make exactly what we're making here on the show. Let's get started. Have you bought these? No. You made this. Genie. All on your lonesome self. Okay. <laughs> I've, it's, what a pity you didn't teach me how. But, oh, yeah, uh, we did but, that last uh, week. Uh, <laughs> I was about okay, to say. so it's the same thing. It's, it's a, just this before you put it through the cutting. You pot. know, there we go. Okay. So, what we're Hopefully doing now is. last week okay. as well. So, this is our sheet that we made, or the same recipe. So, the recipe is yeah. on the website, making your own pasta from scratch. Mm -hmm. So, making the tortellini, basically, what they are is a cute little pockets of delicious flavor wrapped yes. in pasta, everything wrapped in pasta. Amazing, I know. Amazing. You can't okay. go wrong with pasta. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just cut little squares, and what I like to do is I like to cut them in little flour, keeps them nice, and um, actually stops them from sticking to anything, but also I'll dry it slightly, so when we're ready to start making our filling, it's ready for that center and the folding or the technique that goes with it. Yeah. So can you maybe do the filling for me? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Let's we'll throw in a piece of butter. Over your black. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we're going to mash together three ingredients I got. Pumpkin, which okay. I absolutely Is that what love. I'm doing now? You can do that. Okay. You can go all if you want. Is it? Okay. And you did. So, um, I prefer... I always go all in. <laughs> I prefer pumpkin over butternut. I just like the flavor of yeah, pumpkin. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I love pumpkin. Then I've got some ricotta cheese. Oh, yes. So, you can choose... Oh, it's the, the technique Skilled. of a pro chef. <laughs> so, I, I prefer the... Like I said, I prefer that. But at home, if you prefer having butternut, go for it. Yeah. Or even sweet potato, which I've seen now before. Spinach. With that and ricotta. Yeah, that's, that's a good flavor combination. Yes. Okay, good. I love when a plant comes so, together. Uh, okay, next. pumpkin, ricotta. Some parmesan, because you uh, can't... Also all of it. Not. No, it's more cheese. Well, it's supposed to be half, but hey, all of it. <laughs> all it of really it. supposed yeah, to be I mean, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> we'll have more in the fridge to grate during the commercial <laughs> break, should we need any more. Okay, so, then. Some salt and pepper over there. You're going to season that for me? All of it. No, no, no. You can just okay. a little bit, a little bit. I'm getting you a little bit excited in this kitchen today. <laughs> <laughs> it is Monday. Okay. Cool. So you can seasoning. stop giving it a good mash. You got okay. your little mash over there. And while you're doing that, I'm going to cut a few more of these squares. Okay. And while you're doing that, I also just want to say thank you to all of our viewers to coming down to the Good Food and Wine. Yes, in of Johannesburg. course. You were there this weekend. How was it? It was absolutely crazy. The officials actually came to tell us we're making too much noise. <laughs> you know, we just turned the speakers up. It just kept on going. I know. Absolutely. Of course you did. It was such a lot of fun. Oh. So much fun. Clem. That looks good. You know, it's fine. It's rough. It's Italian. It's rustic. On, my, on how bad my gymming's going at the moment because <laughs> this is harsh. Okay. Let me see what you've got there. No, it's dismal. No, no, no. Well, as soon as it comes together. Okay. Which you're almost there. So let me tell you what I'm going to okay. do. I'm going to take a little bit from this mixture over here. Oh, yeah. Just so we can get started. Okay. You can see the, the pumpkins in there and you can see that ricotta's in there and the parmesan as well. I mean, surely they've invented something better than this to mush this together. <laughs> well, they have. I mean, we've got so many choppers and processors. We don't want to talk about that. It's fine. Okay. Like you said, it's all about gym. Yeah. <laughs> so what I like to do is I like either using an egg to seal my pasta or water. I mean, they do the same thing. Okay. Eggs, so, protein, protein always. Why not? Yeah. So just a little bit of your, on your finger. 
I like how oh. you're still committed. You are committed to that. No, really, you could have boiled this button out a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no shame on TV right now. Okay, so I've got some egg white. I just brushed it around the one corner of the, the pasta. And I fold it together to make a triangle. Uh, okay, yeah. and I squeeze out the air because I don't want any of that extra air. Yeah. So at this point, you could actually boil this just like this and we'll be happy, okay. right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my finger, fold the points over, bring it together, yeah. and then pinch and turn out. Oh, okay? so Okay, and then stick together. If it doesn't stick together, a little bit of extra water, bring it together. So that's one done. We wanna try? Yeah, cool. for you. What about, oh, can I try? Yeah. Okay. I'm actually going to pass it to you. You can work on the surface. Okay, I've cleaned all the surfaces. What is, what is that little art form where you can fold paper into lots of little origami. shapes? Origami. Yeah. Okay, I need a little, a little cool. bit. Cool. So not too much because you don't want it to burst out the sides of the pasta. No. That's How's cool. that? That's cool. Okay. So you can just dip your finger in the egg white. I'm not going to even scramble it right now because it's perfectly fine. Again, the intensity. I love it. Yeah, no. Focus. Focus. Let's go. <laughs> it's here. Yeah. To a triangle. And then you press the air out. Okay. Cool, now you pick it up. And then so take around. it around. Oh, yes, okay, with your finger. But you're doing it, you're doing it. In Pinch your like corners together. Pinch. And then just turn the little flap out. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yours is a little bit cuter. But there you go. Okay, then what do we do with the okay, ones they've so been I made? So I made another batch, that's just for demonstration. So I've got a whole okay. batch going. I was going to demonstrate how you cook them. So yeah. again, Boiling pots of water, a lot of salt, very important. Yeah. And you drop them in. Now we're using fresh pasta, which yeah. is amazing because it tells us when it's done. They're gonna come to the surface, and once that happens, we scoop them out, put them on the plate, and then we'll be ready for part two when we come back. Okay, fantastic. There you have it. Making fresh pasta on Afternoon Express. Remember, afternoonexpress.co.za, and you can make all of this lovely Italian magic with us. Right now, though, let's cross over to Bonnie. <laughs> After the break, we chat to an extraordinary and inspiring young woman called Meleng Seku, and she shares with us her journey as a burn survivor. And she also written a, wrote a book about it, uh, documenting her experiences. And if you'd like to ask her any questions or chat to her, call us on 0839133728 or tweet us at Afternoon Chat. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, our guest today is Itumaleng Seku, who at the age of only 11 months survived a fire which left her severely scarred. Through the course of her life, she's undergone over 100 reconstructive surgeries, and today she's a motivational speaker, and she speaks at schools to inspire young girls to live their purpose and to improve their self-esteem so that they can reach their full potential. Welcome to Afternoon Express. <laughs> Lovely to have you with us. Thank you so much for inviting yeah. me. So, Dumeleng, you were 11 months old. A candle mm. fell on you while you were sleeping. Yes. How severe were your burns? Um, according to my mom, there were 70 degrees, very bad. Um, my, when she picked me up from the bed, my right hand was literally falling off. Um, and my four fingers were in bandages. Um, and they were, they were covered um, in a white glove and within days, literally my fingers were just falling within oh. that glove. Oh. So after three months of being in a coma um, and three years um, literally sleeping there um, and hospital being literally my first home, I walked... Um, from hospital with no hand and without four fingers. Wow. Um, my right ear was also off and they had to um, re, you know, make it um, as well as my head, it was expanded and yeah. So wow. a lot had to be done. Yeah. Mm. You were a baby. I mean, do you have any recollection of this yeah. time or flashbacks or um, anything like none that? None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Um, the only um, information that I have really is what my mom has, you know. Mm, exactly. Um, mm, mm. I said. That night must have been so incredibly traumatic that mm. thank goodness you've got no recollection of it. Yeah. But I think with something, when something like that happens to you, the, continue, the trauma continues throughout your mm. life. What was the quality of your life like soon after that? 
You know, for from me, your earliest memories, I suppose. Yeah. Um, for me, I actually realized that I was burnt at the age of nine. Really? It's so weird. Um, but only because my fellow learners, they would always tease me. Um, and I got called names, you know. And then I actually realized that actually, <laughs> that you know, different. yeah. Um, and from that moment, I had to, to learn how to live with myself. But um, I must say that it was very, very hard. Yeah. Um, and my, uh, and um, my self-esteem was uh, 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 um, very, very low, you know. Sure. Um, and I tried committing suicide in grade five. Um, my second suicide attempt was when I was 15 years. And my last suicide attempt, I was in grade 11. I drank 300 pills. Um, I've always been a writer. And I wrote down my, you know, my feelings. Note, and, yeah. um, and my mom found it. Um, but I woke up. <laughs> with no phone, no headache, no pain. No, no problems. So I decided, you know what, this suicide thing is so not working. Life is you not letting you off the hook. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, we all go through serious like self-esteem issues mm. when we're in our teens. Mm. I mean, for valid reasons mm. and lame ones. Mm. But I can imagine, added to already mm. the ones that we have, mm. you, I mean, it was quite an astronomical thing to have to fight through for you. Absolutely. What kept you going and what kind of... What ideas did you hold on to, to that helped you pull you through when you look back? You know what, for me, I think school um, kept me, you know, um, focused. I was very, very clever at school. Um, mm -hmm. I was one of those, I was, um, um, once upon a time, I was called, you know, the, the favorite <laughs> within the classes, you. even though I, I was quite naughty. But I believe that um, my teachers will always love, you know, the clever ones. Yeah. Um, and that really made me focus. But um, without that, my life was just wow. <laughs> hell. Wow. Yeah. And then you still went on to varsity to study mm. uh, audiovisual uh, communications. Yes. And what, what was that experience like now that you were older and the kids? I mean, kids, as innocent as they are when they're young, they're yeah. so quite cruel. Mm. But that's why I was thinking that it was quite a, 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 you know, something quite nice that you only discovered that you were burnt when yeah. you were nine years old. Yes. So you're obviously quite protected when you were mm. younger as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know what? I actually met a very wonderful man. <laughs> <laughs> in 2007, <laughs> yeah. um, very handsome, um, with muscles and, you know, sexy legs. Um, <laughs> it sounds like a disaster <laughs> waiting to happen. <laughs> you can stay, you can stay, we like those. <laughs> we like those. Um, and he said to me when I um, completed matric that, you know what, you are so beautiful, you know. Wow. And, um, and those were the words that I really wanted to hear, especially from a man, you know. Mm. Um, and he, he said to me, I love you so much, um, and I want to get married to you. And I was like, really? Oi. Me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and I said, okay, cool, let's try this thing, yeah. you know. Um, and we tried it for a while, um, and then we... You know, um, and then we got married, um, and my husband's name is Jesus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, and we build this beautiful relationship. How sexy are Jesus's legs? I know, right? <laughs> so, you've got no idea. Yeah, I've dated oh, wow. a few men that look like Jesus. <laughs> the real deal's way better. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we walked this um, journey, and when I went to university from a school of having um, 12 children mm. in one classroom, I had to face 5,000 learners in one class. Wow. And for me, that was unbelievable. I couldn't live, you know, mm. um, with that um, situation. And my husband then said to me that, you know what, you have a purpose, you know. Mm. And from there, I was like, okay, so what's my purpose really? And he said, your purpose is to bring hope and healing to my children. Yeah. And from that moment on, I started going out to classes because I knew why I was there. Exactly. Um, and, and from that moment on, really, um, I actually think that people started looking at me, you know, um, in another way simply mm. because I actually started loving 
yourself. Myself, and I started um, realizing why I was here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I actually tweeted last week saying that I, the definition of beauty is purely mm. um, by opinion, mm. and you are truly beautiful. Thank you yes, for sharing your story with us. Absolutely. We're going to have you. you on the couch a little bit later chatting. <laughs> <Yeah. so. laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. We'll be back with the Dumeling later on the show. And remember that we are, talk we are taking your calls live on 0839133728. If you have any questions or comments for our guest, or if you have your own story that you'd like to share of overcoming a traumatic experience that uh, you'd like to share with us, you can also tweet us at Afternoon Chat using our hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook post. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. If you've just joined us, we're on the couch with Idumeleng Sekou, who's got a very inspirational story about how she survived 70-degree uh, burns mm. when she was 11 months old and how what a success she's made of her life. We do have a caller on the line. Kelly, hello. Hi. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. What's your question What's or comment? Um, well, when I was two years old, I had a third-degree burn. And it's been a very traumatic experience and uh, very difficult. You can't dress the way you want to dress. Uh, people stare at you in a funny way. Mm -hmm. So it's been very, very difficult to deal with something like that. Mm -hmm. And I understand where the lady is coming from with, with her situation. I've been there. Yeah. Thank you very and much for the call. Thank you. I just want to say, Jenny D, I love you to bits and I'd love to meet you someday. Thank you so much. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love you too. <laughs> um, listening to your story, and actually I was reading a bit about your story as well, you made such a beautiful comment where you said you thought you went to boarding school really early on and you thought it was because your mum yes. kind of was embarrassed of you or whatever, but then you, uh, growing up and, and realising your relationship with your mum, you realised it was for your own good because she wanted you to find your own mm. strength and courage. Mm. What was that? I mean, it must have been quite... I went to boarding school and I hated it. But, I mean, what was the experience? <laughs> Like um, for me, I always related it to my burns, you know. Yeah. Um, but when I actually um, completed matric, I was so thankful because I realized that if I had still lived with my mom, um, she would have bathed me, she would have fed mm. me, you know. Yeah. So I went to um, a boarding school and I was the first black child there. Mm. And, and I'm not saying anything mean, but white people... Um, they actually don't feel sorry for people, you know. So for me, they said to me, here's a pen, right, you know. Mm. But I realized that they were um, making me learn something, and I'm so thankful, you know. And I grew up with um, my nurses, um, and look, there were days when I would just wake up and I'd feel like, okay, I'm not making my bed today. So yeah. I would just wake up and say, nurse, my hand is sore, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, <laughs> and um, she would just make my bed. But there were days when they would literally force me uh, to learn stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful because if it wasn't for that experience, I wouldn't have um, been so, you know, yeah. um, yeah. yeah. But I mean, you're you sassy and astute and then went on to, to work in the media industry. Mm. Yeah. I was about to ask you about that. <laughs> and then you're also a motivational speaker and you speak to young people. What's the core message that you relate to them at your talks? Basically, my, my talk is um, look at me, you know, and look at what um, have happened, you know. Um, and I've got one hand and I've got one thumb, but I can do everything in this, yeah. you know, whole world, I can bath myself, I can clothe myself, I can feed myself, I can write very beautifully. Thank mm. you uh, to my teachers. And you've written a book called What and Do You I've See? And I've written a book um, called What Do You See? Um, that took me two years to write. But the reason why it took me so long is because I had to tap back into those emotions yeah. that I felt. Don't even explain. That's not long for a book. <laughs> That's enough time for a book. <laughs> you know, um, so for me, I had to really... Um, I had to go through that um, emotional journey so that the readers could read what I felt, you know. Um, but also because I wanted to relate to so many people who've got scars 
within, you know. My scars, they are here, they are mm. visible, but so many people, they've got scars, you know, inside. Yeah. And the process is exactly the same. Low self-esteem is exactly the same. Um, mm. Your behavior is exactly the same. Whether you've got 10 fingers or you've got one thumb, but low self-esteem is And you low still have to do the work, yeah. And, and with my book, I'm saying, look at what um, I have gone through but look at where I am now. Yeah. And I'm saying that I can drive, you know, and yeah. I can do everything. What is it that is stopping you from being the best um, possible you? Yeah, yeah. Sense, you know. Yeah, in closing, and quite briefly, what do you want young women to know about beauty? That beauty stems from within. Yeah. Um, that your soul is the one that is so beautiful. And once you get that right, there is no way that you will not be beautiful here. Yeah. You know, um, when I was young, and I know you said briefly, um, yeah. when I was young, I used to dress horribly. I never used to take care of myself because of how I felt uh, um, within. Mm. But now that I feel so beautiful and so sexy, I actually take care, you know. Um, I bath longer, I shower longer, and I know that I'm called a girl, but actually I really am. Yeah. <laughs> you are so awesome you are and so, so inspiring. Thank you, yeah, thank you so much. And thank of course, course so we are giving away a copy of your book today, yeah. so yeah. stay tuned for details. Yeah. Now, Children of Fire is South Africa's first charity dedicated to young burn survivors. They raise money to pay for reconstructive surgery and rehabilitation of these children who would otherwise receive no support. We went to find out more about the amazing work that they do. Check this out. Children of Fire is Africa's first men's charity. Um, what we do is that we help children who've suffered severe burn injuries um, get them reconstructive surgery and rehabilitation. We really teach the kids that it doesn't matter how they look like or how people perceive them to look like. They're still normal people and normal members of the community. Right now in South Africa, we've got at least 350 children in hospital because of severe burn injuries. And the biggest thing that we do while we do get the children treatment, we also believe in um, teaching families and, and communities about burn safety. Interesting enough, recently we've just been to Ladysmith where we, where we taught at least 400 adults about burn safety in their homes. The kind of support the children need is after they are burned, first they need to be taken for very good medical treatment. Things like occupational therapy and physiotherapy have to be encouraged from early on because then the whole reconstructive surgery process later becomes easier. So in some cases you find that children come to us four or five years later and had, had they had the right medical intervention early on, then their fingers or joints wouldn't fuse together. And then you have a supportive health system from early on. After the, they leave for hospital, if there was a system where the children could be encouraged, or the families rather, to encourage to bring the children to hospital on a regular basis, just so doctors and whoever is in charge of their care um, knows that everything is going well. And then you have your family support that comes very important because when they have a great support system from home, then they are able to navigate um, society. And also remember during burns, the treatment itself, the rehabilitation process, it's problematic both for the family and the child. So one has to, like here, when you find yourself having to deal with the children and also having to educate the families as well as to how they can deal with the public. And we do things like going to schools as well and talking to other children about disfigurement and we try to educate communities that it doesn't matter how a person looks like, but still they are part of the community as well. My journey has been a long journey and it's been hard. For the past few years I've been going to school and the kids there, they like to tease and which is bad for me because I when I wake up, I say I don't want to go to school because I know that when I arrive at school, the kids are going to tease me. I've had a go very good time here in Children of Fire. I've got a lot of friends like Homun. Uh, he's, he's one of my best friends here. And I enjoy being here because they take care of me. And no one teases me. And, yeah, it's been good. I came here on the 27th of April last year. 
And then on the 4th, 5th of May, I had an operation at Krisani Paraguanat for a tissue expander where they improved her hair. After the operation, I felt so happy because I had her. I enjoy being here because I have friends and they are kind to me. And I enjoy it because Mama helps me for, for the operation, for everything. And it's nice to be here in Turano Fire and I like everything. What families can do for, to help themselves and the child as well is to really treat the children as normal as possible and to make sure that the child is not hidden at home because we have had those cases where because of um, sometimes people's reactions, families do not want their children to go to school because people will judge them and things like that. So to, be, to, to make sure that um, your child has um, a really normal life, you need to let them be normal. So you need to let them play with the children in the park, you need to take them shopping with you, you need to take them to schools because then that, that way you're empowering your child to be, to feel comfortable with who they are. And I think for, for us that's the biggest joy when the children come here and a lot of them come wearing their beanies or scarves. And once they start being here with us um, from really shy people and they, they blossom, they become these really powerful individuals. And that's why we are here. Our children gain so much confidence that they know they can't, they have to live, they belong here. Wow, wow, children of fire, they do such incredible, incredible work. Incredible yeah. work. Yeah. Oh, those kids. <laughs> what advice would you give to children living with physical disabilities? Mm. I would say um, don't look at how you look like. Mm. Look at what is within. Yeah. And then um, push yourself really uh, to become the best possible you and reach your full uh, potential. Forget about the fact that you don't have hands. Make it work, you know. Yeah. Um, I've actually learned that in this world, nobody feels sorry for you. You can walk mm -hmm. around, you know. Sure. Um, I sometimes play with um, a metro uh, polices, and when I get a finding a ticket, like whatever, and I'll say, but my hand was painful. <laughs> <laughs> you are so um, And sometimes I get away with it, and sometimes I really don't. But. Um, <laughs> But the point is, make what you have work, work. you yeah. know. Um, stop feeling sorry for yourself. That's old, you know. Um, and I'm not saying it get, you know, well, I am actually saying it get over it. But I'm you saying... Actually... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm actually saying um, appreciate what you have, you oh, know. And what you can do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and stop... Uh, um, stop complaining, really. If I can honestly ride with one thumb, you know, then exactly. you can do so much more if your mind tells you to. You're just so incredible. During the break, I was saying to both the ladies that I just feel like I'm throwing my life away. Yeah. Like when I look at what you're achieving. <laughs> yeah, you're you're incredible. <laughs> now, today you stand a chance of winning a copy of Dumaleng Seku's book, What Do You See? Simply SMS the keyword express, your name and city, to 33728 to enter. SMSs cost one round 50 each, T's and C's apply, and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. We'll be back with you, Dumaleng, later on. But after the break, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express. And today our three design contestants meet up with their mentors to chat lounge ideas. We'll be right back. Win a home on Afternoon Express where you, the viewer, can win one of three luxury apartments at Valdivia Estate in the Cape Winelands worth over 3 million rand. Designed by our three contestants using finishes provided by Caesarstone and Plascon. Welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Our design contestants have less than a week left to complete their final challenge, the lounge. It's the last opportunity to blow the judges away. So each of them met up with their mentors to discuss plans. Take a look. So now all of the decisions, all the creative decisions that you've been working towards in all the various rooms are going to culminate in your, your living area, which is really, really exciting to see. And obviously the centre of that living room is your rug, and so this decision is really important. It's going to, for me, it's a game changer. It's, you're going to make or break the space. So maybe if you want to take me through your options. Well, what I'm looking for is a rug that's very bold, uh, that has a sense of African in it. Um, I'm looking to define this, the lounge as a space on its own, 
So I'm looking for a rug that's gonna stand out and be very bold and something that's gonna wow people. This one specifically, um, I like the, the pattern. It has that African feel that I'm looking for. So it's definitely gonna stand out. And as always, I'm willing to take risk. Ooh. <laughs> And the colors, I like how it has the black, which is going to reference the steel that I'm bringing into the space. So your first option for me is strong. I think it's interesting in terms of the color. It's kind of cheeky with this rust masala color. And I love the way that the chartreuse is going to tie in nicely with your curtains. Right, I think this is probably my favorite. Now this one, I really like the transition between the patterns. I like the colors, how they come together. I like how it picks up on the terracotta that's yeah. used in the kitchen. And that bit of white is gonna work well with the rest of the room that I'm keeping white and with the feature wall that's standing out. I think it's gonna be very interesting in the space. It could be way too much, um, but at the same time, I think it, it could just sing, it could pop. And then our last option, out of the three now, this one is definitely a no-brainer. I can already see the rug in the space. I can already see it working with my coffee table that I'm bringing in with the nice black Caesar stone with the white grain. Oh, can't wait to see that. Which will definitely work. I'd say this is the safest option for me. I'm definitely considering it because it's really nice. Well, the best thing is we don't have to make a decision now. There's a lot of variables. Um, let's take all three, take them to the site and see which works best on site. I think I have a tough decision to make. We do. So Michelle, I need your honest opinion on my TV unit that I've designed. What do you think? Well, it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be in the room space, but it was a design that I know you wanted right from word go. So I've got a few questions for you. If someone moves in and they want a different color. Well, that's, that's the nice thing about the product is you only need to apply universal undercoat from Plascon and they're after any color of choice. So it's quite okay. versatile in that sense. I love the fact that all the wires are disguised, everything is concealed, but what are you going to do with a large television? Well, that can also be done. So this was made from MDF. So it makes it easy to change to any desirable size. Um, all you need to do is just enlarge the opening to your liking and then use the um, plaster repair mortar. It does feel, I must say, it does feel light. Yeah. What I do like about it also, it's a, it's a fixture and it will add some more value to the space because it is fixed. Okay, so how are you going to soften the rest of the room with this look? I will soften the space with the slidable moving panel that will hide the TV and that will introduce that equestrian feel with that leather that is contrasted with the white sofa that we have at the back and this fabric from LRT's um, that's a leisure and vinyl provided for us. And the beautiful swivel chair from Maoka, how are you going to utilize that? It's a really exciting piece, it's a really important piece within this room. Um, with its position there by the sliding door, you can see the inside and the outside at the same time. The, appreciate the beautiful views, mm. um, see how the architecture of this interior TV unit um, relates to the architecture of the outside. Okay, so where are you going to position this coffee table that you've got on order? I think it should still be positioned over here, um, so we do have that more space here for movement in the front. And it'll be softened with greenery and books. Beautiful, yeah. Okay. Team VC's apartment is a very clean and minimalist space, so we need a centerpiece that's quite linear and light. The colours I chose are very natural and a lot of white and a few black accents throughout the space. So I'm looking for a table that would be a good centerpiece for our unit and that's not too heavy, that would add a wow factor to the space. John, I totally agree with you. What we need is a real signature piece that will be the center of that room. And I love the idea of using glass as a top to keep it light and see-through and not a big, heavy statement in the room. You know, I definitely think Team VC has come to the right place. El Toro is a custom-designed company and we do specialize in having very light-framed, minimalist items designed. So, and the item that I've got in mind is extremely light and reusable so if you want to move it into a different space you can use it for a desk or a dining room table as well. I know you mentioned you spoke about the linear lines that you guys have um, in the apartment but I think to bring something a little bit more different to the table pardon my pun um, we can actually create by using this item it sort of contradicts the whole thing of just having something linear and quiet where you have one piece that focuses everything in the room on this piece and becomes this expressive piece that brings everything together. We would like to work with a 16mm rod. The idea behind using that profile is the fact that it's a very thin and minimalist steel look. Just adding to this and adding to the lightness of this, just add a beautiful 10mm glass piece on top of that. 
I absolutely love yes, it. Yes, we love it. I think it's fabulous. It's exactly what we want and we're going to win. <laughs> Exciting. Now, the lucky winner of our grand prize draw will win their choice of one of the three apartments our design contestants are working on at Veldevi, one of South Africa's premier estates. Now, last week, Danilo went to check out the security features of the estate, and earlier this week, he went back and got a lesson in horse riding. <laughs> Here at Val de Vie, both the residents and the horses get treated like royalty. Today, I am being treated to my first ever polo lesson, which could be your new sport if you've entered to win a home on Afternoon Express. I'm intrigued to see how we can get this lesson going, but on a metal horse? Are we Trojans or...? <laughs> Dan, what we've got here is Henry. Henry okay. is where you're going to start. Hello, Henry. Henry is for a reason. Henry doesn't move. If you hit Henry's legs, Henry's legs don't break. <laughs> so without too much ado, let's get you on. Cool, let's hop on. And you've ridden before? Yes, I've ridden horses before as a child. I used to get involved in all the dressage stuff too. Comfortable. Right. You're such a comfortable rider. Good horsey. <laughs> Great. Dan, I think what we're going to do is start by changing your hand position. You're going to yeah. be playing polo. You're going to need one hand to hold a stick. True. You're going to hold one rein. Across there, turn your hand the other way around. There we go. Okay. Put your hand, right hand out. I'm going to put that grip through, turn around, and grab the stick like that. And how are we going to turn? You're going to twist, get out of the saddle, and you're going to take your arm out dead straight. Your head's going to be over the ball. Oh, I you're see. You're going to come down, and you're going to swing through, hit the ball and you're going to come back into that position. Kevin, in all my years of horse riding, I've seen lessons for outrides, trail runs, beach rides, but I've never seen polo lessons. That's what excites me the most about Valdivy. What, in your opinion, do you think sets this equestrian estate apart from any other in the country or the world? Valdivy's equestrian estate is unrivaled because we are now have expanded out to Pearl Valley. We're going to now include a riding school. We're in the process of designing an indoor polo arena which will be holding international show jumping events so where your polo is a summer sport we will be able to play right through the season and play indoor polo in in one of those so whatever you do show jumping dressage polo you can do it on this one estate and the facilities are world class really really superb let's just see what happens here today wow brilliant hey look at me Uh, there we go. threw me over there. You need a bit of help? You can't throw me under the bus, you can throw me over the horse. I might look like an 18th century uh, sort of traveler or adventurer, but this is what legit polo players look like. Dan is incredible. He's done phenomenally. He's not missed one ball and taken to this like a duck to water. It's most certainly not common for somebody to pick it up as quickly as this. Normally, people are clearly worried about the horse, which he's not. And he's done incredibly well. All hats off to him. Man, these creatures are so regal. What a fun game to learn to play. And this could be your playground very, very soon. Another man who's had to learn to play polo because of his brand new lifestyle is Rake Nietling. Rake, I hope you were or were not watching that. How did I do? I was watching and uh, not bad. It's not as good as my first time, but I think it was pretty good for a first time. Thank you. So did the trainer say so. Apparently you took a few more extra swings to get it right, but so be it. <laughs> it's not as glamorous on the hair as I would have imagined, so I'm keeping my hat on while we have this chat. Why has Val Vie decided to incorporate the equestrian lifestyle into the estate? Obviously here in the Wildlands, you know, it's a very popular Activity, a polo field like this just creates an incredible you know, feeling of space. It's five and a half hectares. We've got two of these. And we cater for some of the other equestrian activities as well, like dressage, and we do outrides here. So just also creates a very nice feeling to have the horses in between the homes, and uh, the equestrian really works for us. Rake, what happens if you're somebody like me who doesn't own a horse? Can I still enjoy all the activities? Absolutely. We've, you know, we've got horses here in the stable that we, that we use for lessons. We have lots of events. We play polo four times a week and it's an ideal place to just come sit on the porch, enjoy just a glass of wine or a glass of bubbly, watch these amazing athletes go for out rides. We've got uh, miles of trails that you can enjoy. So it's really 
you know, something special. It's also so close to Cape Town that you can you know, just come out here and, and uh, kind of switch off. What was your experience like starting out learning about polo and where are you now? Well, my love for the sport really started here. Um, I was watching polo from that porch there for, you know, for many years. Always wonder what it would be like to be on the horse. About a year ago, decided, okay, that's enough of the watching. I have to get on there. Got some lessons from Nacho Figueres, which is one of the you know, top polo players in the world, also here from Kevin. It's been one season, I look forward to the next season. Hopefully I can improve. I don't think you're ever too old to learn how to play polo. And uh, here at Valdivie, we cater from the beginners all the way to the, you know, the best in the world. Well, I'm definitely a beginner and what a rush it was. I'd love for you to experience this too. This could be your new backyard. All you have to do is go to privateproperty.co.za, click on the winner home link and vote for your favorite room. That will automatically enter you into the grand prize competition where you can win a home right here on the Valdivie estate. So make sure you enter now. That's Danilo Acquisto with your Polo down. Remember that by voting for your favorite design contestants lounge, you stand a chance of winning paint from Plascon to the value of 5,000 Rand and you automatically get entered into the grand prize draw. Here's how. It's not called win a home for nothing. You, the viewer, can win one of three completed apartments at Valdivie Estate, valued at more than 3 million rand, by voting for your favorite design contestant's lounge on privateproperty.co.za. Win a home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with NetBank. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. So we've been making our own perfect pockets of pasta perfection today on the show. <laughs> and now we're going to get quite saucy with them, apparently. Yeah, okay. So I've got a lot of butter here today, and I'm not mm -hmm. going to use all of it. I, don't need, I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I've got a pat... Pa, pat? A pot. A pat. Pan, pan. <laughs> I've got a pan, really hot. I'm going to add the butter there. We kind of want to toast the mm, butter a little bit. Butter. So butter has a lot of different other flavors. Toasted flavors. butter. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we can smell it already. You yeah. can smell that nuttiness. So we know Oi. butter is quite creamy. If we start cooking it, it starts developing and cooking all the solids in there. Okay. And that starts to toast and you get that nutty flavor that comes out. Mm. Right. I love it when you talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm salivating already. So that's going to start cooking down. Yes. And I love adding sage to butter. So it's like a magical combination. I don't even know what sage actually smells like in real life. Save me a little piece. Oh, it smells amazing. Lovely. Yes. Okay, so this is going to be a good dish. It's so good. Mm. So the butter and the sage cooks together. The sage goes a little crispy, which is amazing. Okay. It's like a little canapé, a little snack. Okay, you know? but now you haven't chopped it. What if we eat the leaves? No, no, no. I kept it whole. Okay. Because maybe, you see what happens is sage does tend to get a bit overpowering. Okay. And if you bite on a massive leaf, it gets a bit soaky. Okay, so you can take yeah. it out. So All what right. you want is you're going to see it starts foaming like this, and that means we're nearly there. The indication right here is smell. You're going to smell the nattiness, and then you know it's good to go. Okay. What I'm going to do so long is I'm actually going to add our tortellini back in there. So it kind oh. of toasts in the butter. Yeah. Look, you don't eat the butter. The butter dresses the tortellini. No, I'm totally feeling you. This is <laughs> amazing. You give it a bit of a shake. You can see how they like, become all glistened, all delicious. You can smell it now. What you do is to stop the butter from burning, hit it with a squeeze of lemon. Wow, good tip. And also, it's just like that acidity cuts through the richness of the butter. And yeah. look what I got for you, some grana padano. But I think we should actually do it on the plate. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. And maybe you should do it as well because that looks like, a, you know, one of those things that I don't know how to use. Oh, let me actually <laughs> flip it. I, I don't want. I know. I know you had an injury last week. Yes. So I don't want to let you get burned again. So I'm going to do the little flip over here, <laughs> and you can see the tortellini's toasted up. Oh, Clem. You've actually made my Monday. Mondays aren't so hot, but you've made that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to attempt this. Go for it, go for it. Watch the nails, watch the nails. No, I'm not going to attempt this. Let's swap side, swap side. Okay. And just to finish it off, just a little bit of extra cheese on top. Yes, layer it on. And I mean, it's quite rich already, but the cheese, I mean, Ooh. just add so much more to it. Oh, can you smell that? That is so good. So we all go to gym after this, right? Yeah. And this is perfect for meat-free Mondays as well. It is. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Remember, afternoonexpress.co.za and trust me, this is definitely something that you're going to want to make your family for dinner tonight. Oh, how is that? looks absolutely that? amazing. Catch a whiff of my dish. <laughs> well, ours. ours. looks absolutely Mine. incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, so tell us about your book. 
there's a book launch coming up shortly. I yes. Think this coming so weekend. the book launch is on the 6th of August mm -hmm. um, at the Barn Hotel in Midrand from 12 until 5. Yeah. Um, and the ticket price is 350 but that includes um, the book and some lunch as well. Oh, lovely. Amazing. Congratulations. I Thank love you so much. Okay, we've got some social media comments for you. King Terry says, in the trick did we, we did a comprehension about it to Maleng, and the whole class literally cried. Her life's journey is incredible and inspiring. How wonderful. Mm. And then um, Letu Sang Motsami says, the story shows that purpose is in the heart and not our bodies. Big mm. ups to you, sis. Thank you so much for all of your comments. Okay, so have <laughs> a just test in it. Test amazing. and see how you feel about it. Clem, can I dish for you, my oh, angel? Oh, please, yes, thank you. Well there done. You go. And of course, we'll be back again tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for sharing your stories. Until tomorrow, 5 o'clock on SABC3. Good night happy and happy eating. eating. Ciao. Bye. Oh, I can't wait to tuck into this. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we rock out with one of SA's premier alternative bands, Epo Polisikar, as they celebrate the 10th anniversary of their album, Swana Sun. And for Winner Home on Afternoon Express, we catch up with our design contestants halfway towards completing their final challenge. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel good production. My name is Joseph Adewumi. This is Amarachi Restaurant in Brooklyn, New York. My mother's name actually is Amarachi. Amarachi means God's grace in the Igbo language. We're in the downtown section of Brooklyn, so we have a very uh, wide corporate community. The fire department, police department, uh, a lot of city agencies are here, and also some businesses, Chase Bank, some schools. You may find a, a Caucasian, an Asian, and an African at one table having Caribbean food. So it's, it's just a melting pot. We have our burgers, we have our chicken fingers, we have our lobster linguine. And then in Nigeria, our, some of our more popular dishes like jollof rice, suya, egusi, you know, these are, these are like staples. These are things people are very, very familiar with. Peas and rice, oxtail, curry chicken. So we try, really try to touch a little bit of everyone.